Totally Useless Information with Nick and Roy is brought to you in part by Tom's Place. For the finest in men's fashion, Tom's Place will suit you. Located in Toronto at 190 Baldwin Street in the heart of Kensington Market. Or visit toms-place.com. This is Totally Useless Information with Nick and Roy. Listen, laugh, and learn. Why was the guillotine invented? Don't lose your head over it. Uh, (laughs) What the heck is a lollipop man? Hi, I'm Nick. And I'm Roy. And this week, we scoured the internet to find out this useless information just for you. Plus, we'll answer your questions in the mailbag segment. And in the news, he busted himself for Breaking Bad. Totally useless information. It's everything you never needed to know. fan favorite in one of our earliest topics. Where do expressions come from? We want to know right now. Well, do you remember when we uh, we started the show, we said, uh, let's come up with some topics. I think animals was the first one, then expressions was the second, and so on. You're listening to Totally Uses Information. Did we Nick. do that in my kitchen? No, I did that with uh, the lady. Oh, no, um, we did the sex. The sex, the sex one. We did. one in- yeah, we did the sex one in your kitchen. Sex in the kitchen. That's right. Thank it you. hasn't been sanitary since then. No, but- it hasn't. <laughs> uh, we want to thank you very much for joining us. 72 plus countries around the world. Thank you so much. We are really thrilled. We're coming up on our fifth anniversary. And as uh, as time goes on, we'll tell you more about how we're going to celebrate it. And you're going to be part of it as well. So expression. So um I'm going to give you my teaser right off the bat. Uh, in North America, a crossing guard is a traffic management personnel, as they put it. It's a crossing guard, right? Help uh, the kids cross the street. They're normally stationed at busy roadways to help, you know, the kids and pedestrians cross the street, right? However, in British, Irish, and Australian streets, they call them lollipop man or lollipop woman. They call them lollipop man? That's right. So now you might be wondering, why do they call him a lollipop man or a lollipop lady? Were you wondering that? Uh, Nick, I'm wondering it right now. Well, wonder no more (laughs) because the modified circular stop sign that they carry resembles a large lollipop. Lollipop. So they're walking around with the lollipop. Look at the lollipop, man. Exactly. Well, they don't have much. I do like English humor, though. Yes. I like this one. A sight for sore eyes. Oh, there you go. Yes. The writer Jonathan Swift, which best known, he had a bunch of stuff, but best known for Gulliver's Travels. Okay. He used the phrase in a 1970 book of collections of genteel and ingenuous conversations. Oh. He used the phrase that the person would be a sight for sore eyes. Uh-huh. And it became a very, very well used phrase. I liked it a lot, very much so. Mm-hmm. Beautiful stuff. How about this? Uh, he threw the kitchen sink at it. You know, they say they throw the, the kitchen sink. It means you just throw mm-hmm. everything, including the kitchen sink. Well, it means to use up one's last resource, exhausting everything one is capable of to achieve an objective. The expression derives from World War One or Two, when households in the United Kingdom gave up everything they had except the kitchen sink to meet the mad demand for material, especially metal. Everything but the kitchen, the kitchen sink. sink. Exactly. Folks, that's a good one. Yep. You got to write that one down. I like this. This is cool, too. Paint the town red. Oh. Now, I thought right away like the red light district or something like it's that. It's not? It's not? No, it's not. The Chicago Advance newspaper in 19, uh, 19, 1897, the yes. year Nick was born, right. <laughs> in 18, 1897, yeah. printed a story that said the boys painted the town red with firecracker sparks on Independence Day. Okay. And people just took out that part and became a used expression to paint the town red. I like that a lot. That's a, an exciting thing to do. Let's go paint the town red. I like it. I like it yeah. a lot. 
in fact, I will uh, extend an olive branch to those people who don't uh, really care for this show. <laughs> extend an olive branch. Ever wonder where the phrase extending the olive branch comes from? Well, I'm going to tell you right now. Listen, laugh, and learn here on Totally Useless Information with Nick and Roy. It is an offer of peace, and it goes way back to the biblical times. The ancient Romans and Greek mythology also followed this. It was when a dove brought back an olive branch to Noah to signal that the flood had ended. Ah, that's and in right. ancient Rome, the defeated used to hold up an olive branch for peace, and it's stuck ever since. Wow. I didn't think about that. There the dove go. brings the olive branch, and he knows there's land. Yep. There you go. Cool. Well, sometimes I wish Nick would put a sock in it. <laughs> <laughs> Some people have tried. Talk about the king of segues. It's a British slang. We have the lollipop man. Well, we have put a sock in it. It's a British slang for shutting up, possibly thought of that they would place a sock in someone's mouth and then put tape or, or tie a handkerchief around it so they couldn't get the sock out to shut them up. Thus the saying, put a sock in it. <laughs> I like Be that quiet one. or I'll put a sock I'll in put it. Put a sock in it. There you have it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's a tall order, if you ask me. Um, it, you know, it, it's an expression that uh, they're really not sure where this came from, so it was a tall order just to find out the information. But it was first in use in the late 1800s, maybe the early 1900s. The word tall has a sense of big or considerable, and order has a sense of a command or instruction. So another example of this idiom, because it's what it is, that uses tall to mean considerable or exaggerated in a tall tale. So it's a tall order, it's an exaggeration of both. Tall order, cool. Mm -hmm. There you go. I like this one a lot. By and large. Ooh. When people say by and large, I mean, you know, yeah. it's just, it, yeah, it's a very well used term. It's a nautical term, a lot of them are. Yes. It's a nautical ship term when the wind is blowing behind the ship direction of travel so the wind is coming from behind the ship the wind is said to be large if it's coming from behind the ship because i guess it's full sails it'll fill the sails yes so if the wind is coming from behind the ship it's known as large if it's coming directly from behind the ship it's known as by and large uh, and I, that pushed the ship forward faster i guess so they would say by and large I thought it meant by a large, because that's usually when I go wardrobe shopping, that's uh, by a large. Yeah, yeah, your wish, extra large. <laughs> <laughs> Remember when they used to call it husky? Yeah, they used to call it husky, but when I go to buy men's underwear, I, I'm, I relish in the fact that I say double XL, please. Yeah, but they told you, <laughs> they told you not to bring relish anymore. You're listening to Totally Useless Information with Nick and Roy. Thank you very much for joining us week after week. We really do appreciate it. Uh, there are many ways for you to reach us. You go to nickandroy.com, click on Contact Us, and we'll uh, read another entry in our mailbag section. But in the meantime, look out. Look out behind you. Bone chilling. Blood curdling. Oh, the horror of horrors. Listen. If you dare. She does a lovely scary. job, but she scares me. She's scary. She's really scary. Then she's yelling at the food one. Ah! <laughs> I'm sure she's a sweetheart. We don't know what she looks like. We just give her a script and she reads it and then she says. She's hot. Back. I think she's hot. Yeah. All right. I'm going first. Go ahead. I'm going first. I'm shaking in in 1976. My boots. What year? Sorry, what? In 1976. Uh, you were around. Uh, yes. I went... <laughs> the movie The Omen. Multiple cast members' planes were struck by lightning oh. after they had acted in this movie. David Seltzer and the producer Mace Newfold and the star Gregory Peck. After filming, their planes were hit by lightning. In fact, one of them didn't get on the plane that was hit by lightning and crashed and all the passengers died. Wow. So... Did it have something to do with the film? We'll never know. <laughs> Ooh, wow. My goodness. Uh, um, that's scary indeed. So I'm going to give you, over the next little while here, as we talk about horror here on Totally Useless Information mm -hmm. with Nick and Roy, 
the worst horror movies of all time. Okay? Ooh, I'll okay. give you a couple right here. I'll this, let you know if I think so. Okay, this this film uh, came out in 1992, and it was called Axum. Never heard of it. No, someone who asked for directions. No, that's not it. Uh, a weekend. A, Is it Ax Men? Axum, like Ax them. Axum. 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 Yeah, mm, ask him a question. It. A weekend. This is this is a description of this worst, one of the worst horror movies of all time. A weekend retreat at a remote cabin in the woods for a group of childhood pals turned into a terrifying fight for survival as a former friend whose family was killed years earlier comes back looking for revenge. Dun, 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 dun. Yes. Another one is dead at the box office in 2005 after finding a mysterious film reel hidden in their ceiling. The well-meaning staff of a struggling movie theater assume that the film is an old B-movie preview trailer and they would play it before midnight screening, screening of a timeless George A. Romero masterpiece. Night, Night of, of the Dead. Night of the Living Dead. Yeah, and I'm, that's George Romero. That's a great horror And film. what happens to these people after they find this reel of film? You don't want to know. It's really bad. They get popcorn and ice cream. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's a horror to pay for it. That is, yes. <laughs> I'll have more coming up in the next uh, next part of this segment. In 1976, again, that was the year, I guess, of the great horror film. Yeah. Sissy Spacek. Okay, do you remember the film? Uh, I can't think of it offhand. What was it? Uh, Carrie. Oh, right. Okay, yes, Carrie. Sissy Spacek, in order to keep continuity for the film Carrie, she was soaked in pig's blood mm -hmm. for the scene at the end where the bucket of blood falls on her. And she, they said cut, but they couldn't come back till the next morning. She slept in the pig blood soaked gown no, that she was really? wearing because they were afraid if she took it off, it would change the continuity. So she kept it on and went to sleep in the trailer. Wow. I bet you she mm. slept alone. Nick and Roy will continue with totally useless information. We're back with totally useless information with Nick and Roy. Listen, laugh, and learn. Here's some more worst horror movies. Meet Cleaver Massacre. In 1976, it was a popular year for, for Meet, our, Wow, 19, see, 1976 was the year of the horror. It was. Meet Cleaver what? Massacre. <laughs> Meet Cleaver Massacre. <laughs> when, a, when a professor specializing in ancient rites and rituals is attacked and his family killed by four of his students, he summons an, Ill, an evil spirit to hunt down the attackers and avenge his family. I would assume that that evil spirit was the meat cleaving. <laughs> That's right. Now this the one, butcher. Was, this one came out on video in 1991. And maybe it just didn't make it. To the, it was so bad it didn't even. Yeah, make it, it was so bad they took like 20 years to get it to it somebody was, to watch. I think it was STV or something like a straight to video. It was more like an STD. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So this one, this the name of this movie is Horror of the Hungry Humongous Hungen. The horror of the hungry, hungry humongous, humongous hungen. Hungen. A genetic. Huh. So this is what a happened. genetic a genetic scientist realizes that alliteration is the way to hurt people. Well, <laughs> as a matter of fact, genetic experiments gone wrong unleash oh, an ancient voodoo curse that produces a masticating monster. Masticating monster. Don't masticating. get. Yeah. Okay. He just kept chewing and chewing until he went blind with an appetite for terror. But oh, it was oh, narrated. Oh. By Oscar-winning actor Jack Palance. Really? Well, yeah. he had a great voice. Yeah, he did for such yeah. a crappy movie. Yeah, so he was a it was Do you a voodoo curse. The scene in Batman where Jack Palance is talking to uh, Jack Nicholson, and he goes, "You're my number one. Uh, You're my number one." <laughs> really awesome. I'll Jack. have one more, yeah, a couple more sets of uh, worser horror films. Okay, well, Gunnar Hansen, yes. best known as the chainsaw-wielding lunatic in the film Texas Chainsaw Massacre. That's right. War, again, he has a continuity thing. Because horror films have such low budgets, they have to do everything in there. Remember we said that one of the masks in the movie was a 
a mask of uh, who was William Shatner. It was a William Shatner mask. Right, yeah. Right, yeah. So, but anyway, this guy, he wore his mask and costume 12 to 16 hours a day, seven days a week. Wow. For over a month was his shooting. Okay. It was 90 degree weather at the time. And they were afraid if they washed it. Because if you remember, he wore this very tight fitting black suit. It didn't really even fit him in a white shirt. And, you know, I mean, and of course, the disgusting mask that was made out of people's skin, you know, but anyway, I think they called him Leatherface in the in the movie. But anyway, 90 degree heat, they were afraid that if they washed the clothing, it would shrink and it was too small to begin with. Oh. So they didn't want to. So for 90 degrees, seven days a week, 12 to 16 hours a day. Mr. Hansen ran around in this costume, <laughs> sweating. <laughs> oh my God, that must have been terrible. Wow. Yeah. So now Sometimes I, it stinks to be an actor. It does, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I get paid big money for that, man. Yeah. So here's now even more worser horror films. Mr. Jingles from 2006 on video. An innocent mm -hmm. man was in prison for a crime he didn't commit. And he emerged. Which is most people in prison. That's right. <laughs> According to them, he emerges from prison bent on exacting revenge on his accusers. Another one that went right to video in 2000 is called Camp Blood. Out and about on a camping trip in the woods without a care in the world, four campers found themselves in an unknown world. With the death of their guide and the mercy of a cold-blooded killer, the trip of fun in the sun took a wrong turn suddenly. With friends mm. slowly disappearing, so does the chance of getting out alive. You will not get out alive. Camp blood. <laughs> kill, 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 kill. Okay. In uh, 1976, no, I'm joking. No, <laughs> another 76. Actually, 1968, the classic horror film, this is one of those classics, Rosemary's Baby. Yes. Which wasn't really scary until the end of the movie. Right. Mia Farrow had to eat raw chicken liver. Oh. Well, she had to do it multiple times because of multiple takes. The worst part is it's not disgusting enough to eat raw chicken liver. Mia Farrow was a devout vegetarian vegan. Oh, no. And so for her to do this was even more disgusting. Just putting meat in her mouth would have been enough to make her vomit raw chicken liver. So the, her expressions when she's doing it are perfect because they're real. Gosh. Bum, I, bum, bum, bum. I can't think of that. <laughs> You'll right. never get out alive. <laughs> On that note, uh, here's one last worstest horror films. I know it's not grammatically correct. I just wanted to have some fun with The these. most worstest? One, no, one last worstest <laughs> horror films. Okay, okay go ahead. Yeah. Sigma Die, 2007. At the Let end, me guess. Let me guess. Okay, about a school fraternity. Uh, a sorority. At the Probably end, a sorority. Okay, let's see. Let's find out. At the end of their college school year, five girls of decided course. not to go home, but instead rent a house in town, and thus the hijinks then ensue. You know what, though? Because they rented the house, they probably forgot most of their clothes other than very short shorts and right. Tight-fitting cut-off T-shirts. <laughs> right. And somehow they lost their bras along the way. And what was the name of this film so I get to see it? No. <laughs> Sigma Die, 2007. Sigma Die. And finally... Die. When of... my wife sees me watching it, I'm going to die. That's right, exactly. <laughs> and finally, one of the worstest is, uh, horror films, Alice in Murderland. Oh, no. Oh, no. It's Alice's birthday, and she ordered a Nick and Roy birthday message. No, it's Alice's birthday, and her sorority girlfriends, there's a sorority again, threw her a themed party. Everyone comes as their favorite sexy character from Alice in Wonderland. The Jabberwocky wasn't invited and brings murder and mayhem to the girls' night out. Wow. Yeah. Happy today. What happens tomorrow is history. Yeah. Hail to Clara. Hail to Clara. Hail she, to Clara. Do you know who Clara is? Don't you know? 
No, who's Clara? Clara is an Indian rhinoceros who everyone became obsessed with. Hmm. Rhinomania swept over Europe. Clara in a character. That's because people were probably a little horny. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> is, is it the, rhin the horns of a rhinoceros that are aphrodisiacs? I believe so. I, yeah, yes. ground up horns. Do Maybe you that blow them or eat them? <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Do you uh, blow them? All right, three. Ground up horns. Maybe that's where they. Oh, I know what you thought, Nick. <laughs> well, I thought blow maybe the that... old horn. No, no, I thought. Maybe... Oh, I thought you meant grinding it up, making it into little lines, and. <laughs> no, I thought maybe uh, that's where the expression "horny" came from. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. maybe. Uh, Rhinomania was was swept over Europe. Clara was in a, a carriage drawn by eight horses. Travel from country to country to meet her many fans. She was on tour for 17 years, and she inspired paintings and sculptures, clocks, and even a even a popular hairstyle. So that like the women would use ribbons or feathers to mimic the shape of Clara's horn. Speaking of horn, so hail mm -hmm. to Clara, the Indian rhinoceros who went on tour for 17 years. Yeah, so they would uh, mimic the horn. Did the guys try to mimic the horn, the shape of the horn? <laughs> <laughs> We're not quite sure, but stay tuned for more. Oh, my God. The tallest married couple in history, oh. Anna Haling Swan. She was 7 foot 11. And Marlon Bates, a, a, uh, a Martin Bates. Was, I believe his name was Martin Van Buren Bates. Okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Van Buren. The president. Crazy. Yes. Yeah, he was seven foot nine, but here's the cool part. They had a baby together. Oh, no. Mm hmm The baby weighed 22 pounds. No. 22-pound baby. Wow. That baby came out with a driver's license. <laughs> <laughs> it did. Wow. Uh, yeah, talk about the rhinoceros horn. Yes. <laughs> Nick and Roy will continue with totally useless information. To access the full library of episodes, visit nickandroy.com. That's nickandroy.com. Hi, Nick and Roy for Tom's Place. Here comes the groom. Are you looking forward to a wedding on your calendar? If you're the lucky groom, Tom is your friend and the best man to help you dress the entire wedding party for that special day. Whether it's formal or informal, a destination wedding, traditional or contemporary, with tailored suits or classic tuxedos. And with all the accessories, why rent a tux when it's so affordable to buy a classic that will take you to events for years to come? Definitely do that, folks, and do it from Tom's because buy your tuxedo, don't rent it. If you're the father of the bride or the groom or a special guest who needs an elegant new suit or tuxedo, Tom is the wedding wardrobe meister who will help you get ready for the spotlight and camera flashes of that special day. Find out more at Tom's Place at 190 Baldwin Street in Kensington Market. No one can save you more or dress you better than their wedding specialists. Enter to win the wonderful wedding contest at Tom's dash place.com that's tom's dash place tom's with an s tom's dash place.com to win a 500 dollars credit for your wedding party outfits or visit our website nickandroy.com and click on the tom's place logo tom's place will suit you let them show you how you're listening to totally useless information with nick and roy listen laugh and learn the United States government, they're, they're brilliant people, aren't they, down in the United States? Where, oh, where they they're live? wonderful. Yeah. Everything they do is correct. Well, Just this, look at Joe. Look, Just look at Joe. Stumble and Bumble and Joe. Listen, let me tell you right now, the United States has had a history since we're in history of totally useless mm -hmm. information with mm -hmm. Nick and Roy. Mm -hmm. The United States government once tried to induce rain by bombing clouds. Okay? Oh, my God. I actually heard this. Civil War... Uh, let's see. Let's find out. Let's find out together, shall we? Uh, gather up, uh, you know, uh, turn up your device. We'll wait. Yeah. Okay. You like turnips? Yes. <laughs> Civil you War. You like them when you have a little ground up rhino? Horn? Yes, exactly. <laughs> Sprinkle all over it. Civil War General Edward Powers had noticed that it often rained in the days following a battle. Based on his anecdotal evidence, he concluded that the noise agitated the clouds and triggered precipitation. 
In his defense, uh, Powers wasn't the only person to think this. So he thought it was the noise. That's the reason why it rains in, in Canada all the time after Nick eats beans. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that'll, now, even, that'll rattle the windows. Even, uh, <laughs> was that an H-bomb? Uh, the, <laughs> Napoleon also believed this, okay? 20 years after Powers shared his hypothesis, the United States government decided to run an experiment. They armed scientists with dynamite and kites and put Power's idea to the test. Unsurprisingly, it did not work. Isn't that funny, though, like after Fourth of July here in the United States, it, it actually does rain a lot after Fourth of July. That's right. So that's weird. Maybe, maybe they have something. Roughly 97% of history is not recorded. Oh. So how, history history well, is recorded yeah. over right now about 6,000 years starting with the Chinese and of course cave paintings things like that so okay. that's considered recorded history yes but humans have been around for 200,000 years so 90 percent 97 percent of human history has not been recorded how do they know that how do they know if it wasn't they, recorded they they don't know. I guess if a tree falls in the woods, does it make a sound? I don't know. Does it? What came first, the chicken or the egg? <laughs> <laughs> in the Wild West, frontiersmen were so sex-starved mm. that they would wait in line just to see a pair of women's underwear. Wait, say this again. In the Wild West, frontiersmen were so sex-starved they would wait in line just to see a pair of women's underwear. Hmm. Was, the, was the woman in them? Uh, let's find out. The demand for sex work. <laughs> let's find out together, shall that we? That would make it a bit more interesting. <laughs> Depending <laughs> upon, like, nowadays, that might be real interesting with all these songs. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what it was? It was a bunch of clotheslines with clothespins and un women's <laughs> underwear. The demand for sex work was so high that when sex workers actually arrived in the West... They shifted the entire economy economy of the frontier. Towns wow. sprung up around brothels and sex workers who often became wealthier than the men that they served, often provided important social services like sheltering domestic abuse victims, funding education, and even offering workers' compensation oh, to the injured stop men. Stop with the wokeness. They made it right. They did. Because it's women, and of course they had to make it right That's because right. it's it was sex workers, folks, indentured sex workers. Well, they, were, they, they were indentured. They had all of their teeth. <laughs> <laughs> the one that didn't made the most money. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, can she whistle. <laughs> and thus the cartoon Gumby. <laughs> What are you talking about? Gumby's best friend was Pokey. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like an instruction manual from That's, Ikea. <laughs> oh, wow. Listen, laugh, and learn. Totally useless information with Nick and Roy. Wow. All right, back to some normality after Nick sent us on that path of degeneracy. Yes. <laughs> is that a word? Degeneracy? It is now an issue. <laughs> <laughs> in the years before Julius Caesar invaded Britain twice, he invaded Britain in, in the year 55 and 54 BC. But think about this one. Before he invaded England or Britain, mm -hmm. he spoke about what he was going to do. And most people didn't believe it because they didn't think that the British Isle, Britain, even existed. Oh. They couldn't see it. So they said, well, maybe it's not even there. Kind of like the flat earth thing where, where, they thought Columbus was going to fall off the edge of the earth. That's right. They couldn't see it. So most of the people in Rome thought that Julius Caesar had lost his mind because he was going to a place that didn't exist. In the 1920s, there was the bizarre fad. Everyone you was... started it in the 20s? No, I didn't. I didn't start it. I was there. Um, I was retired by then. In the 1920s, there was a bizarre fad. Wearing the rhino horn in your pants? No, but you're close. No, no. You're close. This bizarre fad, pole sitting, 
where people oh. would com- <laughs> would climb flagpoles and sit on top of them for extended. You know, it's period. usually me that comes up with these <laughs> <That's right. laughs> horrific sexual things. I'm glad you've come a long way, Nick. No, no, no. no. Well, it took five years. Um, well, you know, you've come a long yeah. way. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> No, but it's nothing sexual about this. It was a pole sitting where people would climb the flagpoles and sit on top of them for extended periods of time. There's nothing sexual no, at all about that. nothing sexual about sitting on a pole, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the most famous pole sitter was Alvin Shipwreck Kelly. <laughs> who okay. once sat atop a flagpole for 49 days. Yeah, once you get comfortable up there, you know, you, <laughs> <laughs> once you get it lodged just properly, you don't you don't even move with the wind, you know. <laughs> you know what? When he fought it, the flag flapped in the wind. Yeah, could you imagine? They said, "Listen, what was his name? Shipwreck." <laughs> yes, <laughs> they'd Alvin, be like, <laughs> "Listen, shipwreck, uh, we had a little problem here, so we're gonna have to fly the flag at half mast. So hold on." <laughs> <laughs> Hang on. Wrecked them. Wrecked them. It nearly killed them. <laughs> Shipwrecked them. Yes. That was his name. Shipwrecked. That's what it was. Yeah, I'm sorry. I beg your pardon. I misread that. It's Alvin <laughs> Shipwrecked them, Kelly. Only on this show, folks, will you find out this stuff. Exactly. Okay, my teaser was the guillotine. Finally. Man, I almost lost my head just and thinking about it. why was it invented? Probably wow. for the same reason of Nick's trying to explain away his sex trafficking. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, In the Wild just, West. Yes, it was wild. <laughs> okay, somewhere it went from people paying to see women's underwear to the whole explanation of the sex trade. Right. <laughs> but anyway, Nick likes talking about it. <laughs> so the guillotine was invented, get ready, wokesters, to create equality in execution. <laughs> Only the French. Yes. <laughs> Only the French. They invented this because they were so upset that they had people chopping heads off, and sometimes it would take two, three, four whacks with the axe. So they thought that that was a little improper, right. I guess. I don't know. Yeah. And then, of course, they had drawn and quartered, where they would literally just slice you open and watch your innards come out. Mm-hmm. Or they'd uh, attach you to two horses and <laughs> give them a good slap and yeah. see where that went. Yeah. You know, or they could burn you, you know, oh. at the stake. And the French said, you know, there's just too many things. We have too many choices. And w- nobody likes choices. So they created this device that would definitely chop your head off. <laughs> guaranteed or your money back. Yeah, guaranteed or your money back. It, it very rarely fails. And it was equality in execution, mm-hmm. the guillotine. It reminded me of the old joke. There were three uh, three uh, people who were going to be executed by, by this method. And uh, the rule was that if they pulled the rope, it, and it wasn't always perfect, that if it, if it malfunctioned in any way, then the rule was that that uh, person, the prisoner, would then be set free. And so the sure. first person said one was dumb, and the next one was dumber, and the third one, the third one was even dumber. The first dumb guy goes up there, and they ask him, "Do you want to go face up or face down?" He says, "No, I don't want to see it. I want to go face down." And so they pull the string. It doesn't work. Okay, it doesn't hit his his head. He's set free. Second is a little bit dumber. He goes, "No, no, I want to go face up. I want to see what's coming." They pull the string, and of course, the guillotine does not work and so they set him free and the third one when they asked him he said no 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 i don't want to go in there until they fix that thing (laughs) (laughs) nick and roy will continue with totally useless information you're listening to totally useless information with nick and roy listen laugh and learn you're listening to Totally Useless Information with Nick and Roy. We thank you very much for listening, as we do week after week. We do really appreciate it. We say that a lot, but we mean it. Uh, you go to our website, and you do many things, and one of which is, look, you go to the Nick and Roy store, and you can order your friend or family member a birthday message that's unlike anything else that's out there on the market right now. It is informative. It is entertaining. That's what some of our people have told us who have received these birthday messages. And not only does the birthday recipient receive that beautiful uh, personalized birthday message, they also get a subscription to our newsletter, as does the person who orders it. So it's a fine value. NickandRoy.com. You click on the Nick and Roy store. Do it. 
do it. In fact, my nail bag is from a woman named Harriet who bought it for her husband, and you're going to hear about that. It is the greatest gift you will ever give to anybody. Anybody that says they have everything or, well, I can't buy for them, they have everything, go to nickandroy.com, go on the Nick and Roy store, and you can actually listen to a sample copy of a birthday message. It is the best gift you will ever buy. It's very inexpensive. Nickandroy.com, hey, that's where you can also send us an email. What's in the mailbag? What's in the mail? This is one of the nicest um, mail bag uh, things that I've ever gotten. Harriet from Walden, New York. She says, thank you so much for my husband's birthday message. He really loves it. He, uh, she says, in our 57 years of marriage, wow. I have never seen him as excited over a gift ever. She said, a few years ago, my husband ha uh, started to have Alzheimer's and has gotten worse over the years. He listens to the birthday message every day for the last few months. And trust me, Nick and I have been, uh, our families uh, were we're stricken with Alzheimer's, so we know what it's like. Yep. And he listens to his birthday message all the time, every day for the last few months. His eyes light up every day when he listens to the birthday message, and it really does make him happy and brings him around again. And I just want to thank you so much, and I know he does as well. This is the type of response that we get from these birthday messages, folks. Thank you. We really do appreciate it. We appreciate you listening, number one. But the birthday messages is something special that we do at nickandroy.com, really. And and thank you, Harriet. We really appreciate it. Oh, that was really special indeed. My goodness. Well, this is how powerful it is. And, and uh, we don't take you for granted. We really don't. But Jimmy from Arlington, Texas, called, uh, wrote in and said, Dear Nick and Roy, you guys are a couple of rhinestones on a, on a stud horse. <laughs> okay, that sounds a bit weird, but that's okay for Nick. <laughs> uh, a couple of rhinestones and a stud horse. I don't know what that means, but you know what I want to know. Jimmy from Arlington, Texas, writes: Is when did you guys start this crazy show of yours, and why? Well, Jimmy, thank you very much for your writing in. We don't know why either, but uh, we, have not, we don't really have much lives there. Uh. No, we don't. <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, um, we teased you a little bit. So we're coming up on five years, the fifth anniversary of this show. And uh, later in the year, we will have some uh, special shows uh, reflecting back on the five years of Totally Useless Information with Nick and Roy. Uh, mm -hmm. We came up with it. We were best friends. Roy and I are best friends for 40 plus years. We met in high school and uh, we just decided to do something like this let's do a podcast but we always used to try to stump each other when we worked together in in roy's um in roy's uh, dad's restaurant and then we would try to stump each other this is back in the 80s so even before the podcast was even something i would go to the library roy would go to the library get these trivia books and try to stump each other and now look at us we're basically doing totally useless information here on the show and that's how it came to be it's five years now that Roy and I have been doing this, and so far they've told us to keep coming back. So thank you very much. Yeah, you know, um, and the thing is, after staring at Roy's face for so many, many episodes, uh, we have, you know what, uh, as part of the fifth anniversary, Roy, what I'm going to do is I'm going to count up exactly how many facts between the five years of shows that we've done we want to find out how many facts we've given you guys over the past five years, how many topics, and how many mailbags. Oh, you're going to count them? I'm going to count them. It might take me five years to count them, but I'm going to figure out. But more. you can estimate. I can estimate, but more or less. Yeah. But it's up there, so we'll tell you. Uh, we want to th tell you also, you've been listening to Totally Useless Information with Nick and Roy. Today we talked about... All kinds of stuff. We talked about sitting on poles. We talked about history, right? Well, we talked about history. We talked about horror films. We talked about expressions. A lot of cool stuff on this show. You know what it's time for? It's time for the news. And now, from around the corner and around the world, this is TUI News. A New York man inadvertently called the cops on himself when he reported a burglary at a location where he was mm -hmm. running a secret meth lab that authorities... A, a secret meth lab? It was Nick, secret. all meth labs are secret. Well, <laughs> 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 well, 
Well, according to the authorities, they compared it to the iconic show Breaking Bad. Really? Math so this guy's the guy's a meth lab going. Matthew Leshinsky, 23, of Farmingville uh, in Long Island, he pled <laughs> guilty. He's the only guy that put a sign out that says, to the police, this is not a meth lab. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to see here. Just keep going. So he, It's he, a secret. It's a secret. <laughs> If it's a secret, why did they know about it? Well, because he, he... Okay, so this is the story. So he pled guilty to unlawful manufacture of, of meth and other related charges. Is there any other manufacturing of meth? I'm not unlawful, sure. Unlawful, but go ahead. So according to the <laughs> authorities, he, he, Lashinsky called 911 to report a burglary at his purported business establishment. Oh, no. It was Quantitative Laboratories, LLC. There's even an LLC, so he has a register. No, wait a second. So he had an actual, he had a corporate name. He did. Quantitative Quantitative Laboratories. Quantitative Laboratories, LLC. LLC. Okay. (laughs) So when Suffolk County Police officers arrived at the scene, they found broken glass at the building's entrance. The officers also discovered what appeared to be a clandestine lab that, that used a clandestine. To, yes, that one too. That was used to make the meth and a um, and DMT, all kinds of. Wow, crap. maybe he should have called the corporation Clandestine Labs LLC. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been the better name. Oh my God! So this guy's got a meth lab. Yeah, it gets I, broken into. Yeah, he calls the cops to yeah. come help him. Right. With the meth lab. <laughs> Because he was operating a Breaking Bad style drug lab. He, he tried to conceal it under the guise of legitimate business. Oh, so he said, guys, come on in. No, it's not a meth lab. It's not what it oh seems. Oh, my God. Okay. He, this uh, happened in Long Island, New York. Long Island. Farmingville. <laughs> he then. Farmingville. In- <laughs> so check this out. He inadvertently turned himself in. So, so he turns himself. No, inadvertently, he turns himself in. Inadvertently, he turns. Himself in. He, turns right. himself he reported that burglary occurred at the same business. Okay. Oh no. They, the police recovered. Check this out: forty thousand dollars in cash, an undisclosed mm-hmm. amount of ecstasy, over three ounces of meth, and t- six hundred and twenty-five thousand milligrams of ketamine, pure ketamine. He's bad news. He's that, not breaking bad. He's breaking bad news. Yeah. The uh, condom, <laughs> yeah. by the way, the condom was not in his wallet. Uh, he's due no, back. No, it was smuggling. <laughs> like right. the, the guy with the kilt in the last episode. That's right. <laughs> uh, he's due back in court for sentencing, by the way. So there you go. He inadvertently let the cops into the meth lab. That's right. Uh, hey, we inadvertently, uh, well, this is the end of, the, of our episode this time around. But we will definitely 100% scour the internet and check out all other sources to check out and find out totally useless information just for you. And if that wasn't confusing enough from Nick, <laughs> we, we want to thank everybody, 72 countries around the world. Thank you. Thank you so much. We do appreciate it. And we do love bringing this show to you every single week. I'm Nick. And I'm Roy. Thanks for listening. Totally Useless Information with Nick and Roy was brought to you in part by Tom's Place. For the finest in men's fashion, Tom's Place will suit you. Located in Toronto at 190 Baldwin Street in the heart of Kensington Market. Or visit toms-place.com.